episode of the Simply Trade News. Um, today is going to be a little bit different. Again, I'm your host, Anik, and together with Lalo and Andy, we have a truly insightful discussion lined up for you. Different, if I might say. So we are partnering with the team at NCB. FAA to bring this very important and timely news and government affairs to you straight from Simply Trade News, which is awesome. So in this special episode, we're bringing together a panel of experts who are at the forefront of a critical issue, the potential government shutdown on October 1st, 2023. Yes, you heard right, government shutdown, and the ramifications on international trade. As mentioned before, our panelists come from the NCBFAA and together with over 35 organizations that serve thousands of trade individuals who are all advocating for the continuity and maintenance of trade services in the face of a shutdown. So together, we will explore these challenges, the need for collaboration, and the ways which government agencies and the private sector can work together to ensure the smooth flow of legitimate trade while keeping bad actors at bay. So throughout our conversation, we will dive into topics such as the operation of the CBP war room, the importance of seamless communication among trade agencies and measures to guarantee the functioning of trade operations. As we go through this discussion, get ready for an enlightening and thought-provoking discussion that you won't want to miss. Trust me, you do not. I don't want to miss it. That's why I'm here. Lalo and Andy will help you introduce the panel, and then we will begin the discussions. So thank you for making it on the Simply News podcast. And I'm so excited to be in here and listen to what you guys have to say. So I'll just sit back and listen and get educated as our listeners well. So thank you. Go ahead, Lando, Lalo and Andy. Thank you, Anik. Um, yeah, I, I guess NCBFAA for you, it's uh, some people, I listen to some people and they, they want to make a word out of acronyms like USMCA. Why the heck are they saying Uzmaka? It's not Uzmaka, it's USMCA. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and you know, but anyway, don't worry, Anik, that's cool. So anyway, but yeah. Welcome the, to Washington, Lara. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> there you go. Alphabet soup of CBP. <laughs> anyway, um, and CBP. Anyway, um, so Andy, hey, uh, you got this group together for us, which is like literally 24 hours ago so <laughs> this is really cool and uh, i read the letter megan sent out and i was like oh my god what the heck are we gonna like shut down and not have anything else coming into the country and what's gonna happen and you know it was a very effective letter i'm telling you so <laughs> anyway i liked it and uh, i liked the, the premise for this so um th thanks for bringing this group together well, and, and let me say to our listeners, folks, this is a show that you definitely need to listen to. Uh, we're recording this on Friday. It's going to be published on Monday. So it's like we're, we're talking about doing this in, you know, in a matter of a few days here. But this is a call for action. This is not a show that I want you to sit back and go, oh, my goodness, there's a, a bad situation that potentially could uh, uh, come in here. This is a scenario here where the disruption of our supply chain is at risk. And secondly to this, we're going to be talking about the impacts of what the potential shutdown of the government is. This, is, this comes back into the U.S. government that we're talking about. And it appears that both houses of the, or both uh, uh, chambers of uh, the U.S. Uh, Congress, being the House and the Senate, are at odds with the White House here and trying to get a budget put through. Bottom line is, is that people are drawing lines, are coming up, regardless if they can work it out or not, that the scenario here is we have a looming potential shutdown. What's it mean to the facilitation of trade, international trade in particular, whether it's imports, exports, or whatever? So that's what we're going to go and, and talk about. But I, I cannot emphasize, and you're going to hear me again as we go through the show, you need to take action. You're, you as an individual citizen need to look at taking action. Secondly, your company needs to be involved. Your regulatory and industry affairs folks, your legal department, your C-suite, your uh, owners of your company. Folks, you better be getting ready to step up because 
if you don't try and do something, you lose all griping rights here. So as we're looking at that, let me come around. Uh, Megan, I'm going to start with you and, and, and introduce you and let you uh, come back to your team here. But uh, Megan Montgomery is a, a good friend. She's been uh, in the industry for quite some time. We've had, uh, we've gotten to rub elbows in some meetings and, uh, and uh, with some uh, regulatory affairs type efforts and, and all of that. You've, you're just a pleasure to be around and, and all of that. She is the, uh, uh, now I've got dismissed. I think you, you said you're, you're a vice president, is it? Is that right? If I got your title right? Executive vice president. Yep. Executive Vice President of the National Customs Broker and Freight Forwarders Association, hence the NCBFAA, and uh, has uh, done doing a great job there and pulling folks together. And, and you have the challenge of uh, basically herding cats within the Brokers Association, right? <laughs> that is it. I'm a professional cat herder. Pleasure. Pleasure. With pleasure, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Why don't you introduce the folks that are on with us uh, today and and, uh, and their roles in the, in the association? Absolutely. Thanks, Andy. It's been a pleasure to work with you for, gosh, two decades now, which is hard to believe. Uh, so I am lucky enough to get to be the executive director of the NCBFAA. And here with us today, we've got the NCBFAA president, J.D. Gonzalez. He is a broker down on the southern border based in Laredo and keeps us on our toes with, um, with all that's going down on on the southern border, all that's going on down there. And then we are also lucky enough to have Karen Damon, who is a broker on the northern border, the current president of the Northern Border Brokers Association and our Regulatory Affairs Committee's vice chair. Fantastic. Folks, thank you so much. JD, uh, leading up the uh, the Brokers Association here, I imagine there's all kinds of things that you're getting yanked six ways from Sunday, as we would say, and, and setting the agenda. But with the regulatory affairs, and Karen, we're going to get to you in a second here. As you're looking at this, JD, um, and as far as today's show, um, is do you I'm looking at it almost, uh, I don't want to say a panic, but there's, uh, there ought to be a sense of urgency in, in some of this of not only the, the, the brokers and service providers, but even for the uh, the uh, average citizen. Would you agree with that? Andy, yes, I would. Uh, and appreciate the opportunity to speak up here. And I know one thing that, just like yesterday as well, not only are we dealing with a government shutdown, but also with, with an immigration crisis being on the southern border. And that's a challenge in itself because, you know, our concern is that, you know, that they draw people away from customs, considering the shutdowns coming up as well, to make sure that we ensure the, the smooth flow of um, legitimate trade here across the, across the, throughout the United States. So, and leading into the, the rack as well, because that's the challenge in itself, um, taking into consideration customs considered essential personnel. So. But yes, and yes, and 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 JD, it's interesting that you say that because uh, um, just yesterday and the day before here in El Paso, they literally shut down one of our our, our port of entries because they shifted CBP over to help uh, Border Patrol to to you know to help with the immigration crisis. But you, you, you're right. It, it, I just want to make that a point because that was probably one of the news items that we were going to cover had we not done this. So, but but yeah, that, that, that's a very good point. Well, and JD, your your point too is like is, a, is basically bottom line, folks. What that means is resources <clears throat> are being diverted from the facilitation of trade over to dealing with the uh, the migrants and the in the immigration situation. So it's taking away from basically business and and, uh, and those kinds of things. So as we're looking at that, um, Karen, from your perspective on the regulatory affairs. Uh, issue, I guess there's, you know, I'm sure there's quite a few different agenda items, but this is probably one that has gone from, um, you know, where you have your important items. This has now become an urgent item that is probably surpassing your normal regulatory affairs agenda. Would that be uh, a valid statement? Um, yes, Andy. So the regulatory affairs agency oversees the partner government agencies, such as food and drug. EPA, and we have, um, in anticipation of a potential shutdown and lapse of funding, we have reached out to all of the agencies um, inquiring about what staff is going to be available to the customs brokers, to the importers, to aid them in continued compliant imports. 
Um, it's important for the importers to remain and have access to license and permits, websites. So we need to ensure we have adequate staffing to continue the facilitation of trade, allow the customs brokers and the importers to be compliant with these imports. Um, and have the continuous support of these partner government agencies. Um, as customs brokers and members of the NCBFAA, we uh, file 95% of the um, entries into the U.S. So it's important for our associations reaching out on behalf of its members to ensure the proper parties are in place so there's no disruption to the legitimate trade. We're going to get into a little bit more details on that, but that is a Karen. That I, I appreciate what you're you're saying there because, folks, again, what what you were just hearing here is there's customs that you you normally hear about clearing freight, but then there's if you hear the term PGA, that's a participating government agency. Case in point, uh, Karen uh, labeled out FDA as one of Food and Drug Administration. There's USDA, there's the Department of Defense, there's the CDC, there's all these different agencies, it's like, as we say, the, the alphabet soup. So we're going to come back to some of that of what needs to happen here. With that, Megan, let me turn it back over and allow you to introduce. We have uh, somebody else has just joined us uh, on, the, on the panel here. So uh, go ahead and introduce uh, Cindy for us. Cindy Thomas is um, our woman behind the the curtain. She um, keeps us all in shape on anything having to do with PGAs. She's our regulatory uh, agency committee counsel, and we're very lucky to have her. Well, Cindy, let me say that uh, you are held in high esteem, I can tell you, by several folks. So I, I, I appreciate you joining our show as we talk through some of this. So, all right. So, Let's let's get into the scenario here is that with the budget uh, challenges, whatever negotiations and it doesn't, you know, I don't care what party you're part of. But bottom line here is we got a scenario here where parties are, are they don't seem to be sitting down and talking through or if they are talking, they're not coming to any agreement. Regardless, the net result is there's going to be the potential shutdown on October 1st because the the, uh, the the money's not going to be there, if you will, in the budget officially. So if that happens, then uh, most of the government employees are going to basically say, you know, you're not at work. You, you have to stay home when you do whatever that kind of scenario is. But the question comes into play, then how does in, in this clearing of freight – What's going to happen here of, you know, to try and keep, you know, it, it, there's some freight that's moving, maybe not as fast, but what is the net result here? It has something to do with being, uh, I guess, classified as uh, areas as being essential versus non-essential departments of the government. So who wants to take that, uh, that little? To begin with, each agency has to look at their operations. Um, some of the operations, such as the U.S., some of the USDA uh, divisions, such as APHIS, um, AMS, which are important to trade, um, they have a lot of user fee funded uh, positions. So, and, and in particular, their inspection, their inspectors are user fee funded. So those operations will continue. Um other positions will not unless they are considered um, directly or indirectly needed, required to support the protection of life and property. So the agencies have to go through a little analysis of this and um, determine which, a, which employees are used to be essential, but essential versus non-essential employees. And now they've kind of sugarcoated it by calling them accepted employees. So all of that is required by the Anti-Deficiency Act. And the practical result is CBP frontline folks will be all accepted employees or essential and will continue. Uh, the partner government agencies, the, it, it's all over the board. So Okay, so with that said, and I guess let me come back, and, and Karen in particular, um, 
in looking at what agencies would you say are, uh, I get, I, I, I don't know this accepted versus not, it's like, to me, essential is pretty, pretty clear. I mean, if somebody doesn't like something, they'd start changing terminologies like folks go pound sand. I mean, come back to common sense. So what would you say are the agencies right now that we need to be looking at to say, get these folks classified as essential and make sure that they have staff to step up to facilitate trade, whether it's import or export or whatever? So what I think is important is to ensure we have the support needed for the brokers and the importers because the the trade is moving so quickly, especially on the northern and the southern um, border ports of entry. Um, importers are used to that facilitation. It's important that we have the proper contacts within any of those partner government agencies that aren't user funded to continue that flow of trade. It's important for importers to have immediate access should they have any questions regarding their importation so they can address any inquiries, any holds um, with those partner government agencies that have jurisdiction. So that flow continues and that staffing is important. We have experienced um, in prior laps of funding, you know, up to 50% of, of food and drug staff that have been furloughed. So it's important that the agencies recognize the how the staff supports trade and identifies those as accepted so they can support those importers as necessary. All right. With that, let me let's say in, I, I'm aware that in the past when there was some uh, shutdowns, that in particular, the, the impact here, and folks, this is, again, I'm, I, I want you to understand, I can't emphasize this again, uh, enough, this is something that I'm hoping that as you're listening, uh, that it, one, this irritates you enough that you're going to need to do something. I don't care if it's sending an email to some of your representatives, if you are, uh, uh, you know, even to the agencies as well, or making phone calls, you need to do something here. But here's where I'm going to, let's, let's talk about the impact, is I am aware that there were shipments that would come in and, you know, Customs was fine with it as far as clearing it, but FDA the staffing was not there to handle it. And as a result, there were several surgeries and medical treatments that were delayed due to, let's say, instrumentation that was coming in to uh, handle the surgery or medication or different things that were going on because the staff was not there to clear it. As a result, the average citizen's health was at risk. The, the other scenario comes into play too is where Again, just trying to get things going and, and uh, you know, uh, processing the food, perishable items were, were a problem and things of that nature. So, you know, even from a standpoint that maybe, let's say, USDA and, and having with the permits or whatever the case may be, it's just that in looking at this, this is where we're talking about and specifically need to identify who's involved with the clearance of the goods is what you're getting at has your CPSC is another one they have become much more involved in the clearance of goods and and if not processing for clearance but also delaying shipments and and inspecting it well CPSC I don't think has traditionally been considered an essential scenario and now that's a new wrinkle in there. And it's like, guess what, folks? This isn't a vacation that you get to go off and do your own thing. You need to facilitate trade because you're hurting the U.S. economy and you're hurting the average citizen. Karen, would you agree with that? With I, I know I'm on a little bit of a soapbox, but, you know, what do you think? Um, yeah, yeah, I agree, Andy. Some of the things that you highlighted, right, those those delays can have a, a direct impact on, on the consumer. Um, not only those delays can add, add additional unnecessary cost uh, to the consumer, the consumer as well, but the, the mission that these partner government agencies have are important to us. So they need to be fully staffed so they can continue to protect the consumer. The other scenario comes into play, even with the State Department for licensable uh, shipments and coming in, you may have a plant down situation. You may have a dual use scenario there that requires a license and declaration or whatever the case may be. This is one of those, again, anybody, that, any agency that touches 
the clearance process needs to be involved in the scenario where they have staff there to continue on with the volumes to, you know, avoid the, 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 I guess the impact. So let me ask this question. Uh, and, and Cindy, I'm going to come back to you for this particular one is in your opinion from, a the legal counsel side of it, what do we do about this? I mean, all right, so we're talking about it. This is a big dot deal. I'm sitting here on a soapbox. Fine. What, from your perspective, would you suggest people do? Well, I think your suggestion to write in to the congressional people, um, particularly in the House, is a really good one because that's what's holding up the, the works. And uh, it's not only important prior to October 1st, but if we come to a shutdown, um, the next question will be is, how long is it going to last? Most of us can deal with a few days or a week, but when it becomes prolonged, that's a different story. And if you recall, the last shutdown in 2019 lasted 35 days, which was very long historically. Um, this one could go just as long. So those letters to uh, House members need to to continue and even increase if we do go into shutdown mode. Um, so that's the one, that's what folks can do who are listening. Uh, from our perspective, what we have done is uh, have this week gone to all the primary agencies, PGAs, um, with letters from uh, our president, JD, and um, follow up with uh, contacts we have at the operational level saying, how are you going to respond? We're still waiting for answers, um, but our effort was to focus them in on the import and export trade processing functions at an early point uh, so that they can, you know, really factor this into their planning. Uh, often it's overlooked in, a, in some of these sprawling agencies. So um, we are just, and the other thing uh, NCBFA is doing is leading an, an industry-wide effort um, with, we've gained uh, lots of signatures from a, a number of groups, and those are going to be sent to the agencies. So, um, I, you know, we're doing the work, and I think all we can do is is drum up the, you know, drum up the, the volume and... Um, and make it make noise well with that i and, and jd i'm going to come around to you here in just a second as well as uh, megan is that i mean uh, you know folks like cindy and karen and the and the committees and the, and the members of those committees or you know from your association are working in behind the scenes trying to you know deal directly with the agencies and, and things of that nature from a public perspective JD, have you had the opportunity to, um, I guess, you know, get with some of the media and, and sit on some panels there and, and, and be able to discuss some of these issues? And if not, are you willing to do so? And, you know, thanks. And I guess this is our first start, you know, taking consideration this is an opportunity that we're looking at. And, um, oh, yes, we are willing to take into consideration a lot of the brokers that we have um, in the leadership um, has already encountered and experienced the, the shutdown before. So we kind of know where what areas to target. And I know um, you've already touched on a couple of uh, topics, one of them resources, considering uh, some of the PGAs do not have the same staffing as customs. So they kind of... It's, they're kind of limited in the resources, so it's a really challenge. It's a big challenge for us, and we're seeing how we could target this area. And we've already started, as stated. We also had this discussion at COAC that we had an internal discussion because you know it's still not going on. And their biggest concern, as was stated earlier, was immigration. But I know that we're still we're still working forward to see how we can go ahead and make an awareness and see their target our, our representatives to make sure that hey, this is a big deal for us. We really need to move forward because it really affects the trading. Well, and, and the, I guess one of the other questions I have, uh, Megan, let me come to you. Have you had any inquiries thus far from the media as far as your organization? And it, I'm sure they would obviously come through your office and you're going to feed it out to J.D. and others as appropriate. But have you had any inquiries yet? 
Yeah, so we work really closely with several mostly trade-facing publications. We we're fortunate enough to have good relationships with them, and we get you know really good coverage. So when our letter first went out, um, it was covered, covered quite widely, um, particularly by International Trade Today. Um, and then we just sent out our press release this morning to a wider media audience, and that included the letter, all of the signatories, and, of course, our my contact information, and then the contact information of our communications department. So, so we're hoping that all of this will be in vain and that the government will find a path forward to either continuing resolution or, you know, obviously the hope is a, a fully balanced budget, but... If not, you know, we'll continue to work all next week to really just draw support. We've had um, some congressional offices uh, on both the House side and the Senate side who have really taken an interest in this effort, and uh, we're working our way through the White House to try and figure out, you know, how we, how we can really best impact the ability of our borders to stay open. Uh, here's one of the things that I'm going to say, uh, and, and I'm going to ask somebody to uh, be thinking about this. Of, of, in particular, we're talking about the House and in and, and the different committees. What committees in the House? I'm going to ask for this here in a second. Um, you know, what's the committee that, that that we need to be looking at? There's one that has governance over CBP, but then there's others that over the PGAs. So you know, we we need to start looking to see where what committees are there <clears throat> and then i want to go ahead and zero in on all right let's let's who are the representatives from the states and all that because folks you need to be you know again zeroing in on this but as we're looking at this let me put a challenge to any of our uh listeners i know there's quite a few that are from the media doggone it get this into your editors and and your publisher or your uh producers so that you can get this on the agenda you need to be talking about this this week and and this is urgent this is not something that is just well it's just a bad situation folks this is going to be detrimental to small medium and large businesses large businesses may have deeper pockets the small and medium per, uh, businesses, it's going to hurt them. Second to that is you have the secondary scenario here where people, you know, the government will be shut down. Well, then you have other businesses that support that. Guess what? You're talking about jobs. You're talking about people that now can't draw a paycheck, and we're already in an economic uh, downturn, so it's like not, not the best of times. And then third, on top of all of that, is then, again, the facilitation of trade, both, you know, taking U.S. goods and going abroad, some of that stuff can't get out because of the backup on export uh, scenarios and as well as import and, and, and the, the port congestion that that will cause. You, you stop and think about that. If you can't clear the freight and you've got an ocean liner that comes in and you got several of them and or the rail yard or whatever and they can't move the freight, it's got to be held in bond. Well, you may have freight to go out but they can't, you know, move the containers in and out because now it's all congested. So it's a negative domino effect. So that's where I come back around to saying, where is it that we need to put the pressure on? So in this particular case, is there anybody there that can tell me what uh, congressional uh, committees we need to be looking at? Well, it's at this point, uh, the committees are, it's, it's beyond the committee. I mean, it's the appropriations committee that is needs to pass the bills. Um, but right now, the focus should be on House leaders, um, the majority leader McCarthy, um, but also um, on the handful of congressional. There's a five or six who are stopping the works right now. Um, I understand they sincerely have, you know, goals and that they want to accomplish, um, but I I think they're overplaying their hand. I don't think five people with their agenda can hold the whole government hostage for it. And I don't want to get in. I'm not trying to uh, get into the politics of it, but. That's kind of where that's that's where it's at, and um, this is not a this is um, the Speaker McCarthy is not able to move 
anything because of um, five, six people within his caucus. So that's a stumbling block. And I think um, those folks need to, to um, allow the government to continue to be funded and work on promoting their point of view in, in, a, in a little more um, productive way. And if I can just add, Andy, you know, I think when folks hear news like this, right, the, the, the question is always, what can we do? I'm assuming that most of the people who are listening to this, I hope, are in our nerdy little trade world. I'm a proud trade nerd. And the answer to what you can do is to contact anybody that you touch within trade, right? We are trying to spread awareness, particularly within the participating government agencies, that although trade may not be deemed essential or that those those jobs are only, they're redesignated once a year. So they may not be deemed as, you know, sort of a lapse in government funding proof jobs. We need somebody to keep performing those functions. I'll give you a great example from the last shutdown. I think it was 20. 13 or 2018, I can't remember now, uh, there was a very large company that needed EPA to clear some pesticides for the planting of winter wheat. That company lost not only the $20 million per week, per week that the shutdown, you know, was, but you can't go back to October 1st, right? Planting schedules are planting schedules. Once the, the weather has changed and, the, and you know, the, the ground has changed and, and the first frost has come, you, you can't go backwards in time. And it's these sorts of things that are really, we think of trade, you know, in, in containers and in boxes and, you know, pallets, but the, the, the ripple effect is real. So take, take the information you're learning today, take the letter that NCB has put out, NCB FAA has put out, and send it to everyone you know within trade. You know, at the local ports, are you folks thinking about this? CBP, we, we are very glad that you're deemed essential. Who is picking up those PGA functions? How are we going to keep things moving? All of those questions are questions to ask this upcoming week. By the time October 1st comes, it's too late. Those people are gone. Well, to your point, and that's the other thing is, as we're looking at this, folks, I need you to share this, this, uh, this show, <clears throat> show, if I can get that out. <clears throat> I'm so uh, excited here. I'm like choking myself up here. Okay. Uh, folks, I need you to share this show and and get it uh, with your C-suite, get it with your executive leadership, get it with your the owners, get it with trade associations, get it with the chambers of your local communities, especially with if you're in a farming community, just like what Megan was talking about. This is, has a negative effect to where potentially even the agriculture side of things are, are going to hurt. The uh, All kinds of things are coming into play here where as this is going through, it's like, you know, are, are you tired of the our U.S. government and people in there acting like children? You know, it's like a, one of the things when you've got kids in the other room and all of a sudden a fight breaks out. You don't care who started it. They're all in trouble. Well, at this point, take these folks out behind the woodshed and whoop up on them a little bit here and put in for some letters, some phone calls and things of that nature. That's what they're going to need to hear and hear how aggravated you are as far as the media come on folks man you got to step up on this one and 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 have some folks in that has some passion about this to say look at what you're going to do to us it's already negative and i will say you know, this goes back and forth i agree with you there's five on on the republican side in the house that are, are holding their you know uh, some things on this on the flip side of it it's like there's been this you know never ending spending type scenario it's like come on guys we can't keep spending you and i always wind up uh, if we max out our credit cards and you have to stop well come on get together figure out what you got to do but the impact right now is that it's going to hurt the average citizen and the brokers association here, the national customs broker and freight forwarders association is taking a leading role in this. So I come back around, we're going to have contact information for JD and Megan and, and they can get the, the information out to the right parties within their own association, as well as 
reaching out to other trade associations that are involved in this. And this is one of those things that we need to be looking at. And, and, and you know, whether it's radio, television, it's uh, the Internet, whatever, folks, we need to get the word out and do it quick. So I need you to share this and, and, and get the word out. If there are some questions or anything else, you know, feel free to reach out to Lalo or myself, because I guarantee you, I, I mean, I, you know, as we're, we're going through this, man, some folks need to have their hair parted with a hatchet on this issue to get it done and get something moving. And if somebody gets upset about these political issues one way or the other, I'm sorry if we're plowing too close to the corn. This issue is going to negatively affect the citizens and our economy. And this is something we're trying to take steps to try and, and fix and, and, and go forward with this. Um, with that, let me just come back around from a regulatory affairs perspective, Karen, on your end of it. Are there any other things that, as you're trying to push forward, that's now going to be detrimental to, you know, obviously if there's a shutdown, you can't be working on any legislative type things. Are there any other types of negative fallouts from uh, your committee's perspective? Um, I, I would encourage the partner government agencies to continue to keep their websites operational. The, the information that they make available to importers and exporters to educate them on their requirements is necessary um, for there to be legitimate compliant trade. So I encourage all those partner government agencies to consider to, to provide the necessary resources to keep those things operational. Wow, what a great, great point on that one, Eric, and, and whatnot. Um, Cindy, from your perspective, again, what do you see? Is there anything in particular that we need to emphasize that we haven't already? Um, I just, I think that um, folks involved in trade going forward, if we have a shutdown, um, you're going to have to just be, um, I mean, people in trade are already very nimble and problem solvers. You're going to have to do that even more. Um, th this situation would create um, an added friction in the whole flow of trade. And But it's not hopeless. Um, there are, you know, you have to work the problems. Um, we're looking to see um, there's more automation now than there was in the last shutdown. Um, for example, CPSC uh, has automated messaging and that may help things in that supposedly that system will, uh, will, will give automated, may proceed to the trade um, and things will go on. But then the flip side of it is what if the automation doesn't work? What you there's usually somebody you can call or email. Um, we are encouraging uh, CPSC and others to to provide at least certain essential people to backstop the the automation, um, so that if there is something that goes wrong, then somebody can step in. So, um, we, I think. Every government shutdown is different and creates different challenges. Um, I'm, you know, I'm hopeful that if we have to have a shutdown, that the preparation that we've all done will make things a little smoother. Um, but it remains to be seen, and I think people just have to be as um, creative as possible to to get through the, the obstacles that are going to invariably occur yeah i think uh, also uh, uh, in this case cindy and and everyone here on the panel i mean it's the way i'm looking at it and uh, i'm not very much into laws and regulatory or anything or affairs but i do see everything that's going on we just talked about earlier jd uh, talked about the immigration crisis but it seems to me like it may be the the perfect storm and and maybe maybe nobody is looking at this, but if if there is a shutdown, um, to me the perfect storm is saying like, okay, so the immigration crisis going on, um, the 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 auto workers strike. I mean that's creating a lot of disruptions with supply chain. Panama Canal drying up, and and ships are coming in like like yeah, I mean ships are coming in on like I really need this process now because I've been waiting forever, you know, to cross over. 
you know, there's like, again, it's this perfect storm. And who knows if, God forbid, we have a darn hurricane <laughs> that disrupts anything <laughs> in the East Coast because we are in hurricane season, right? I mean, so anyway, I'm just saying it's like a perfect storm in that if we do have this shutdown, it's going to affect us dramatically, I guess, more than people may realize. And so like me, I'm not saying I'm the normal person, like I don't know about trade because I do, but what I'm saying is I'm, we only see, oh, they're fighting, they're fighting, they're fighting, ha, 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 you know, they, they can't get it. No, but we need to realize there's a lot more that's being affected here. You know, anyway, I just wanted to throw that in because um, to to the common or, or or a little, you know, below y'all, I mean, you, you guys are like into laws and regulations, which definitely I'm not in, in that. But, but, you know, I just want to bring that perspective, you know, kind of like Anik and I looking at this, you know, so... Well, and, and, and Lila, that's a great point because it's basically it's coming down to the scenario with all these other factors that have come into play. And there's still congestion on the western uh, seaboard there because of the potential longshoremen strike. And as they're trying to clear all that out, like you said, the Panama Canal's got the drought, the hurricanes wouldn't. A government shutdown would probably have a much more negative effect on things because things are we're, we're kind of vulnerable in that. Uh, J.D., let me come around to you for uh, scenarios we're going to need to try and wrap this uh, up. From your perspective, with the membership of your NCB FAA, I mean, you've got several thousand members. And as you're trying to look through this, as well as your discussions and hopefully joint efforts of other associations, what would be, uh, I guess, the scenario here as far as your message for your organization and, and as well as for, you know, if you will, what we've been talking about here? Andy, thanks. And then I know one of the key uh, factors are communication. We've already have gone together. We're already taking a proactive uh, approach and um, considering that, like, like I said earlier, that, you know, we've already experienced it. So we know what direction to go and advise our members as well as including our members on possible potential situations that we're going through as well. The one thing that you didn't mention and we got to take in consideration, fiscal year falls on the first, which is a Sunday. So we got a weekend to stew over to see how this happens. So it's going to be a challenge. We're going to start off on Friday, continue work Monday. We're going to see where we're at. So, and uh, the one key word that, it's, that we want to make sure we convey is potential. It's not there, but we're just taking action and we're making sure we're including all our members and making sure we're spread the message um, far and wide to ensure that there's, you know, uh, availability to, to, to ensure that our, our comments for our members to let them know that, hey, we're, we're moving forward. We're seeing what we can do. We're bringing um, everybody to the table and see how we can kind of kind of uh, let everybody know on the status zone. So, thanks, Andy. All right. Well, again, I, I'm going to come back to your organization and it's, uh, Megan, I, I think you told me you're going to wind up uh, sending out, uh, I guess, the uh, a link we're going to do a kind of a joint marketing of this particular show between the simply trade and, and the brokers association folks i need you to ask again here's the action that we're looking at please 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 share this show and you know get it to your management get it to any get it to the average person your your network we need to get this out so that people can hear it too um, again, if you're in the media, it's my hope that you would reach out to Megan Montgomery and, and, and JD for the, uh, you know, get them on your shows or, or ask them or make comment on it. And, and let's see where we can go with that and to get the word out three in your local communities. If you're involved in some things, reach out to your local media and see if you can't get on it, whether it's a uh, radio show or a television news program or something like that, reach out and start talking there and, and, and make your, your, uh, uh, make this known with that. I, I believe Megan, you, you, you've got the letter that's gone out. Uh, I would assume that's going to be posted on your website. I know we will have links to, to all of that, but, uh, are there talking points or something? Is there a separate sheet or is it just that letter that are the talking points that somebody needs to look at? Letter is posted to our website right now. It's ncbfaa.org, and it's a public-facing letter. You know, the, the talking points really are, the letter sums them up nicely, but, you know, NCBFAA, we're proudly nonpartisan, bipartisan, whatever you want to call it. You know, party politics aside, Trade needs to move, and it needs to have a, a clear path forward in a shutdown. And what we're asking for everybody to help 
do uh, now is to make sure that we know who those contacts are, right? Who who are we going to turn to if the government does shut down? And nobody hopes more than me that all of this work is in vain, right? I hope that next week we have a budget passed for the next year and we don't have to, to worry about this again for, for quite a while. I'd even take a CR, right? But, um, but, but trade is nonpartisan and moving trade and keeping those goods clear, you know, looking at, looking at the ports, you know, there's live animals that come through the ports. There's, there's perishables. We just have to keep those things moving. And to that point, I I will say, and this may be controversial, but I'm going to go ahead and throw this out is that the facilitation of trade, you just mentioned it, you know, live animals, perishable goods, you know, medical devices, uh, you know, parts of uh, aircraft, parts of the automobiles or, you know, equipment or whatever. That is so vital and it's much more vital than, you know, the immigration scenario. You're going to have to shut that down and keep the resources going on facilitation of trade. Now, people may not like that, but I'm sorry, again, if I'm t- plowing too close to the corn, so be it. I don't want our country to have a detrimental effect uh, across the board, and we've got to get this this stuff moving. So in looking at that, again, as uh, we come back, Lalo, I guess – uh, can you uh, share again, you know, where are we going to have this information or and, uh, and, and available for everybody if they're uh, interested in contacting uh, Megan or J.D. or even us for that matter? Right. So anything and every and all the information that I get from Megan and the team over at NCBFA will be posted in the show notes. So listen to the show notes. Number one. Number two, uh, my team and I will be working through the weekend and uh, we're going to push out several if we can. Um, clips of this show on social, uh, be it Twitter, um, LinkedIn, even Facebook, what the heck, right? Let's just throw it out there and, um, and uh, just uh, make everybody aware of this and, uh, and have links going out. So we'll, we'll do, we'll do all that. And, um, and, and again, you know, just through NCBFA, we'll also provide a link to them uh, where they may be able to see the video of this as well, you know, not just listen to the audio. They like, you know, they're more of a visual people. So, um, so with that, I guess, you know, that that's what we'll do to, to help out. And, uh, I know you all need to go. I know you have a meeting, um, here in about a minute or so. So, um, if there's anything else you all need to say, please let us know or either that, or, you know, we can wrap up, but thank you all very, very much for having, uh, taking the time and doing this, uh, with 24 hours notice almost. So thank, thank you for that. All right, folks, again, you you have uh, what uh, we've laid out. This is a special uh, show for us that's both a regulatory affairs and our weekly wrap-up. So with that, uh, again, we're going to turn this back over to uh, you. Hopefully you'll have a good day. But again, uh, with the actions we've taken, uh, please step up on this one. Don't, uh, Don't sit around. Thank you very much for joining us. Simply Trade is brought to you by the generous contributions of Global Training Center. You can follow the show and GTC on LinkedIn or Twitter and other social networks. Make sure you check out the show notes in the description for a full rundown of today's show with all the important links. Also, make sure that you share this with a friend and subscribe on your favorite streaming platform. We really like hearing from you. If you enjoyed the show, make sure to rate and review wherever you listen to this podcast. If you or someone you know would like to be a guest on the show or would like to sponsor Simply Trade or suggest any topic you would like for us to discuss, please contact us via email at simplytrade at globaltrainingcenter.com or you can DM us on Twitter at simplytradepod. Thank you again for the privilege of your time. Happy trading. Simply Trade is not a law firm or an advisor. The topics and discussions conducted by Simply Trade hosts and guests should not be considered and is not intended to substitute legal advice. You should seek appropriate counsel for your own situations. These conversations and information are directed towards listeners in the United States for informational, educational, and entertainment purposes only and should not be substituted for legal advice. No listener or viewer of this podcast should act or refrain from acting on the basis of information on this podcast without first seeking legal advice from counsel. Information on this podcast may not be up to date depending on the time of publishing and the time of viewership. The content of this posting is provided as is. No representations are made that the content is error free. The views expressed in or through this podcast are those of the individual speakers, not those of their respective employers or Global Training Center as a whole. All liability with respect to actions taken or not taken based on the contents of this podcast are hereby expressly disclaimed.